Hi everybody, this is Donna Lay. I am very proud to present to you today something that was made by Chiro Marchetti and his wife Maria. Uh, Chiro made the incredible Lenormand called the Gilded Reverie. Uh, it comes in a couple different versions. The version I got, there's a hard box uh, and in the box there's kind of a leatherette pouch into which the cards fit very, very tightly. Uh, later, Chiro changed that from what I understand to a larger pouch with a, a different box um, but I'm just showing you what I have here what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about the quality of the cards the images on the cards what you're seeing in the background here is a beautiful spread cloth that Maria sewed that you can use either the gold side on the back for any spread you want the front side has all the houses laid out for you of the Lenormand cards absolutely stunning you can choose in the nine by four spread or like I have here the eight plus uh, sorry the eight times four plus four and one of the questions that is often asked is, he's got a little perk to this deck. So in addition to the beautiful cards, which I will show you from his deck, which are, in, they're exquisite. They're vibrant colors, beautiful images, easy to see. There are both card inserts, which are at the bottom right corner of every card, as well as the number of the card at the top. This, by the way, is his daughter when she was younger. Um, the images are striking, gorgeous. The thickness of the cards, they are pretty thick. Um, the backs of the cards, I want to show you something that's unique to this deck. Um, it may be a little hard to show from the light here, but if you notice the corners, there's a matte finish to the cards. And Chiro took advantage of that in that he made a glossy kind of jeweling look to the inserts and this kind of embellishment around the edge. Same here. And so the card itself has a nice matte finish when you turn it over. The backs of the cards have that same jeweling. Can you see how when I move it in the light, the matte is here? Uh, this is even more pronounced in real life than I can seem to demonstrate here, but the effect is rich and stunning. Every single card has that, that jeweled effect to it. Let's see right there with the, the embellishments. So there's not only just incredible imagery on these cards, but there's just um, a lot of little extra perks. Now, other extra perks that you will see from this deck is the birds card. Gives you two options, so you can choose whether you want the owls or the, looks like Baltimore Orioles, I guess. And you can pick which one you want to use in your spread. Also, there are two woman cards, so you can choose which you want. Or if you're doing a spread on two women, you can actually uh, put both of them in the spread and remove the man card instead. Likewise, the man card has two juicy choices here. So you can um, use two men in the same reading, you know what you're talking about gorgeous cards. Now in addition to these additional cards, Chiro also gave four cards that are not found in the traditional Norman. They're kind of bonus cards. He said you can do whatever you want with them. One is Time, which he called 37. One is Bridges, 38. One is Dice, which has to do with gambling, and 39. We're taking a gamble. 40 is mass. And just to briefly tell you the meaning of these four cards, uh, Chiro also gives a free download on his website, chiromarchetti.com. There's a Lenormand page, and you can download this great book, which tells you things, everything from how to read the grand tableau to some additional spreads to what each of the card means, each of the cards mean. So there's a little phrase about the card, describes it more in depth. And at the end, he does explain what each of these four means. So time does talk about the element of time. He mentions if it's next to certain cards, it may mean one thing or the other. The bridge is a card that he says, actually, if it gets between certain cards, it talks about the bridge between them or obstacles or um, burning bridges, all kinds of things you can apply. He explains that in his document. Dice is like taking a gamble. He explains which might describe a good or a bad one. 
and the mask. He says that's like a, it's a kind of a contradiction or opposite or deception. And he says uh, the mask is symbolic of concealment and deception. It's different than the fox or the snake because it's actually apparent and seems to be something which it is not. So it's kind of you know it. It's a card of not taking something literally or at face value. It can be something about deceptive news, a person who's a fake, someone's presenting one face but hiding another. So that's another card you can use. Now, the question comes up is, if you have a grant to blow, like the spread cloth, and we've got 36 positions, what are we gonna do with the four extra cards? There will be too many. Well, here's one, one solution. In the grand tableau, I'm going to pick this up now. If you happen to get the spread cloth that I have, which has the four at the bottom, the plus four spread, you will have under here one, two slots, and on the other side, one, two slots. So if you put all four cards into the deck and shuffle them up, you'll have these extra slots. The only thing is you won't have houses under them. So you won't be able to read them with houses. If you want to take another deck, put cards under there to represent houses, do what you want. But basically, that's one way you can use the extra four cards in the grand tableau. Uh, if you wanted to include extra cards at the end in the last four positions of the nine by four, you can just put those four cards that are additional in the deck. However they land when you shuffle it up, whatever card is the extra, just make it kind of a ten by four if you want. However you want, just be a little creative. Or, or if you needed to, you could remove certain cards from the deck. If you felt that you wanted to know about something, say, deceptive, and you want to keep that mask card in there to see what's deceptive, keep it in and do it. Now, I just want to show you real quickly the spread cloth. These, these cards are rather large in terms of uh, the size of Lenormand cards, and now, I'll compare a few what they are like. French Cardomancy Lenormand. The size comparison, the French Cardomancy is one of the larger Lenormand decks. You can see uh, it's really about the same size, but just the extra black border. So that adds a little extra to it. So it adds, I don't know, maybe half an inch, not quite to each side, not even. And if you were to compare it to something like the Universal Weight Tarot, the Universal Weight runs a little taller, and these uh, Lenormans run just a little wider. Okay, that's how it goes. You can see it's a little shorter in the back, but a little wider. If we were to compare it to the original Lenormand, there's a rather large difference in size. So now we've got closer to an inch at the top. As well, if we were to take the Blue Owl Cardomancy deck, same thing, there's your difference in size. Okay, so they're very visible. The nice thing is you can see the detail on the cards. Um, the drawback of a large size, size is just it just basically, if you need to use uh, Grand to Blow, it takes up more space. So just prepare yourself to use a little more room. But you're going to have a real stunning visual display once you put those cards out. Now, on this particular spread cloth, when I take, say, one of the cards and I put it on top, it fits almost exactly right on top of the house. So you will be able to put out your cards and they fit pretty much right exactly onto the houses. If you ever wanted to, you could slip like this a little below so you can see the houses that are underneath. You can figure out a way to do that. But basically, it makes a nice, clean house spread for you here, and you can take a peek and look at what is under each one as you do your grand tableau. The cloth itself is uh, it's double lined so it's got you know the back and the front are separate pieces of cloth that are sewn together so it's nice and thick it has a very uh, luxurious feel the back feels like satin it's got a nice luster to it and you could actually fold up your cards within this if you wanted to so if you were to do a spread on the back lay it out like this and now you have an absolutely gorgeous display area onto which you can do your smaller spreads and it will look quite beautiful for your clients. Now as if all that wasn't enough, Jiro also includes a portrait that he made of Mademoiselle Lenormand, or Len Lenormand um, with a deck of cards. It's a glycy 
print. Absolutely beautiful. Many people are putting these into gorgeous gold frames, wooden frames, antique frames, and really this makes a, a gorgeous display for your room. So that's just another added bonus. One of those finishing touches Tiro always puts in that goes above yeah. and beyond. Highly recommend it. Sturdy cards might be a little they're hard to riffle shuffle. Somewhat on the stiff side because they're so big, so it might be a little harder to riffle shuffle them. Um, I don't want to damage the cards over time, so I will either swish them on the table and pull them out for smaller cards. You may want to fan them out pretty on the table, pull out the cards that you need by just singling them out like that however you want, or you can just go right ahead and take the plunge and riffle shuffle them. So that's our Gilded Reverie, Lenormand. Just note that many of Chiro's other decks are gilded on the sides. This particular one doesn't have the gilding, but it does compensate by having the incredible jeweling up in the corners, which makes such a beautiful liquid surprise to these cards. I hope you enjoy this deck, and I would really love to see some of the readings that people post stunning, stunning images. Have fun. Uh, let's take a look through the cards now and so the rest of this video we'll take a good look through the cards. So one, the rider, two, the clover, three, our ship, four, our house, five, our tree. Very clear, dark, and light side. Snake. Coffin is interesting. I actually thought in some of my pictures I had um, steam on my lens. <laughs> it was the cards that had the fog. Okay. Scythe, obviously. And whip, and I wish the colors showed a little bit better. It's a little dark out today, so these don't really show how lit up these cards look from behind. These are our two bird cards that we spoke of. There's the child. Our fox. Bear. Star. Stork. Look at the sun in the back. Dog. That is Chiro's actual dog at home. Tower. Garden. Mountain. Path or crossroad. Ice. Heart. Ring. Beautiful book card. Nice. 